seen an introductory part to this study of chemistry at the senior secondary level. Now let's slowly get into the chemical aspects of various components. What are those? First up, we shall be studying about certain basic laws which govern the study of chemistry. So what are those basic laws that are being propagated here as laws of chemical combinations? So what are these laws that let us uh, go through these parts now? So first up, what does this matter? It is something that definitely has mass as such, but then how is this uh, nature of matter? Is it uh, particle nature or wave nature? This factor you must have just heard about in your 9th and 10th standards, but you are going to have a more deeper study at your PU level in physics. So what we need to understand here is that matter which is present can be present in the form of particles as well as waves. Now it so happened that Certain people say, for example, we had Greek philosophers like Plato and uh, Aristotle. Now, they happen to believe that when you go on cutting something, any particle, so suppose you have a stone, you cut it, you cut it, you cut it, you will get some mud particles and all. And if you go on cutting, where do you stand for? So, people like Plato and Aristotle believe that this matter it is continuous and the process of subdivision can go on and on and on and on they felt that there could be no end for it because how much will you keep cutting but then there were another set of people who believed that no no you cannot go just on and on it will probably stop at one particular step so which means that it will have a limited number of uh, steps and then after being subdivided to a large extent, it will stop at that particular space. So that indivisible particle which is there, they called it as atomos. So here they called it as atomos, which means it is indivisible. So that was the word which they had used that it is indivisible further. Now from that itself, we got this word called as atom. But even Indian scientists, we happen to call them as Maharshis, Maharshi Kanada. So he has proposed about uh, this atoms and all long back. But then what happens is generally the foreign people who are there, they tend to propose these type of theories at a general international level. And that is how their name comes about. So basically, we believe that you can keep cutting the matter, but there will be one smallest particle which is there which we tend to call it as atom. So what is an atom? We'll see the definitive parts are not in the later parts. So now having understood that atom is something which is the last part which we happen to call it as indivisible. Divisible means cutting. Indivisible means you cannot go further. So with that as the basis, we have a couple of uh, laws that we utilize here for our studies in chemistry and the first one is the law of conservation of mass. Now conservation means maintaining. So what does it say is that suppose if there a reaction runs then the mass that we have at the start and the mass that we have it in the end are exactly similar. Now just for our representation this is the arrow mark that we use. I think chemical reactions you already studied in the earlier classes. So you are very much aware that plus indicates which is combining multiple components. Whereas the arrow marks indicate that this side is getting converted on the other side. Now the representation that we show here is that whatever is on the left hand side, we tend to write it as reactants because they react. So therefore reactants and the final things that we get we call it as products so what are products those compounds which we get after the completion of reaction so in these cases you will realize that any reaction you take up the mass on the left hand side will be equal to the mass on right hand side now how do you get this masses for that at this level you will have to know about the elements till at least atomic number 20 now atomic number 20 is calcium so starting from number one say hydrogen till number 20 calcium so here you should know all the atomic numbers and atomic masses also for that particular part so without that you will not be able to understand these concepts very very clearly so all i can show you here is that what are the numbers for it but you will need to know all this by yourselves so just getting into the concept now about this law 
An example is taken where carbon is reacting with oxygen to give carbon dioxide. A very simple reaction that we come across. So carbon mass is 12 gram. This you can find it from the periodic table. Atomic number 6, mass number 12. Oxygen mass is 16 gram. This once again you can find it from periodic table where the atomic number is 8, mass is 16. But since we have O2, we have it in total 16 into 2, 32. And carbon dioxide, when you actually calculate this, carbon is 12, whereas oxygen is 2 into 16. Because it is CO2, carbon is 12, 2 into 16 is 32. So how do we calculate this? Can I write it as 12 plus 32? I am going to get it as 44. So what I am trying to make you understand here is that, in total, the masses which have been present here, if you see in this cases here, you will realize that, 12 gram of carbon is reacting with 32 gram of oxygen. So 12 plus 32 is 44. Even this side it is 44. So this way you take up any reaction you will find this law being validated. If it is not equal it means that you have written the reaction wrongly or something has been messed up. So this is one basic law that we tend to find where we can see that in this cases the definition of the law is that in every chemical reaction the total masses of all the reactants is equal to the masses of all the products now here you had in total two reactants whereas here you had only one product so because it is just one the total came 44 if there are multiple products you can add even that also so a similar sort of example if i have to just uh, take and elaborate uh, pretty much quickly so let me take h2 plus o2 gives rise to h2o this is nothing but uh, production of water. Now the first thing that you have to do is you have to balance this chemical reaction. Otherwise you will not be able to formulate those masses. So how many hydrogens are there? 2, 2. Oxygen is also this side 2, that side 1. So therefore you will have to write this as 2. So this is how we balance the chemical reaction. We had 2 hydrogens but we also had 2 oxygen whereas there it was just 1. So now for that balancing I have done. But in the process what happened was hydrogen count became 4. 2 into 2 and therefore this will be 2H2. So this is how at first we write the balanced uh, chemical reaction in this cases and uh, we will now see the further aspects of this. So this is the balanced chemical reaction that we have here. What is the mass of hydrogen from periodic table and from your knowledge you need to know it now mass of hydrogen is 1 but then in total you have 2H2 which means that the total mass is 4. Oxygen is 16 we have already shown here because there are two oxygens this is 32 gram. You just check out this will be equal to 36 gram because one molecule of water H2O is nothing but two hydrogen because two hydrogens are there plus 16 this will be equal to 18. And because it is 2H2O, it will be equal to 36. So this is how for any reaction you can see that the conservation of mass is maintained on either sides. So this is one of the first laws that we come across in our basic studies of chemistry. Moving on, we have law of definite proportion. Definite indicates pakka. I mean, there is not going to be any change irrespective of time, place and whatever other conditions. So what does this uh, definite prof uh, uh, proportion say by Joseph Proust is that uh, he says, a given compound always contains exactly the same proportion of elements by weight. What does this say is, suppose I have H2O, water. Now I already realized that the total mass is uh, hydrogen mass is 1 but 2 atoms are there plus oxygen mass is 16 but only 1 atom is there. So when I totally add it, I will get it as 18 gram. This is what I have already come across. So in 18 gram, what I can analyze is that 2 grams are from hydrogen, 16 grams are from oxygen. So when you convert it into percentages, I think these mathematical aspects, you must be clear of this. You will realize that the ratio here is hydrogen will be 11.11% whereas oxygen will be 88.88% but just to make it into 100, we have showed it as 88.89%. What we try to convey here through this law is that 
you take this water from pond you take this water from sea you take this water from well everywhere the composition of water is always going to be h2o you are not going to find water as h3o or h2o2 as such no you will find it as h2o and be crystal clear that hydrogen will be 11.11 percent in this oxygen will be 88.89 percent in this whether you take it from a pond you take it from a river or any source so what this law tells us is that a compound has its own innate nature irrespective of where you get it so this is about the law of a definite proportion which has been proposed by joseph proust as an example once again uh, water was uh, taken up here to give you an idea about how this law has been present so moving on to the last law that we have that is law of multiple proportion multiple indicates multiplication into one into two into three some particular factor is been multiplied in those cases so what does this uh, law of multiple proportion say this was proposed by sci uh, the scientist dalton where he said that when two elements form more than one compound let's again take a support of an example now i have carbon is it's common in both these reactions it is reacting with oxygen once again this is also common carbon is reacting with oxygen but the products that i'm getting is different carbon monoxide carbon dioxide so what we are understanding here is same compounds are reacting but the product that we are getting is different so what is this law trying to tell us here when two elements form more than one compound more than one compound carbon monoxide carbon dioxide the masses of one element in these compounds for a fixed mass of the other element you can see here carbon is fixed on both the sides 12 12 each but the masses of one element you can see that oxygen is varying a little of the other element are in the ratio of simple whole numbers now what is the simple whole number we indicate here is that carbon is fixed in its calculation oxygen is varying and how is the oxygen varying this has used 16 gram this has used 32 gram so in a ratio when i write can i write it as 16 is to 32 because 16 gram was used here 32 gram was used here and we know how do we simplify these ratios in the simplest form we can write it as 1 is to 2 so irrespective of whatever we take the ratio of reaction of oxygen will always be 1 is to 2 so actually how do we write this uh, reaction in a balanced form let me just show these two reactions here carbon plus oxygen gives rise to carbon monoxide carbon plus oxygen will also gives rise to carbon dioxide now this depends on the supply of oxygen if the supply of oxygen is good you will get carbon dioxide if it is not good you will get carbon monoxide and just to balance that part you will have to write it as 2c and 2co2 so that balancing happens so what we try to see here is that a complete oxygen was not present here only half the amount of oxygen was present therefore you got carbon monoxide whereas required amount of oxygen was present here and therefore you got carbon dioxide so once again just to go through the law what does it say is if you have a fixed amount of one element and if it is reacting with the same elements then the ratio of reaction is always a constant in this case it is one is to two there may be other examples which we will be seeing later with respect to other concepts also and trying to give a relation to this where you will see that it's not always one is to two it can be varying in nature and uh, another law that you can again familiarize yourself is the law of conservation of masses just count the masses here 12 plus 16 is equal to 28 left hand side is equal to right hand side 12 plus 32 is equal to 44 so this is how even that law has been satisfied in this cases so this is how we study about the three different basic laws of these chemical compositions that we have so having seen these various laws just the revision of sorts where so that you can understand this you can recollect all these things and try to write down so that in examination what you write matters no doubt understanding is important here but when a testing is done it is about your writing skills 
your understanding of the concept how do you present it on paper so kindly have a good practice of this state law of conservation of mass we have discussed this at length so here only a statement is asked so generally these type of questions will be for one mark as such so you just got to write the statement if they ask for explanation then you can give an example like we had carbon plus oxygen giving rise to carbon dioxide that is what you can write second one state and explain the law of definite proportion now this becomes more so like a two marks question because you have to write statement then you should also explain now what do you mean by explanation explanation indicates that corresponding examples you have to take for example the examples that we had it here about hydrogen and say oxygen you try to take a different example because this example is something that has been explained here if you can take a different example it means that you have understood the concept very well try it out please third one explain an example to illustrate the law of multiple proportion now here the law is not asked to you but they are asking an explanation for illustration of multiple proportion once again the example used there was carbon and oxygen to give carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide if you can take some other example it would be nice for you okay so this is how we have this concept of law of chemical combinations in this chemical parts thank you sairam